Well, good morning. Welcome to Compassion Church. If you guys want to stand as we get to sing about the goodness of our God, come on, let's sing together. I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures of faith. I'm never enough and You came along Put me back together And every desire is now satisfied For you in your love Oh, Lord, there's nothing
continue to worship the Lord this morning and sing this his goodness and how he never fails us.
Well, hey, we got a brand new song for you guys this morning. I love this song. I don't know what you're coming into this room with, what struggles, what hard things are going on in your life. But this song is about this idea that the Lord will provide everything we have and everything we need. It says in Matthew chapter 6, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The things that you have going on in your life, whatever it is, when we choose to seek first God and his kingdom, when we choose to put him first over everything else in our life, the Lord provides everything we need. So let's sing this song together. Sing along if you catch on. Who got the flowers and all of the beauty? I don't have to wonder.
me we need is my father has it oh my father has it and every single time the lord will provide cause my father has it oh my father has it he has everything we need oh everything we need cause my father has it Oh, my Father has it, and every single time, the Lord will provide, cause my Father has it, oh, my Father has it. Let's just encourage you in this moment, whatever you may have going on in your life, to lay it down at the feet of Jesus, because God can provide for you everything you ever needed. He has peace and joy and love. If you would just surrender it to him, whatever circumstance or thing you might be going through, whether it's anxiety, depression, finances, family problems, lay it at the feet of Jesus because he has everything that we need. Let's just sing this one more time. Oh, everything I need, everything I need is my Father has me. My Father has it, and every single time, the Lord will provide, cause my Father has it, oh, my Father has it, oh, He has it in His hands, He has you in His hands. Lord, I pray that whatever it is going on in our lives, that we would fully surrender it to you. That we would know your promise is true, that when we seek you first above all else, that you will provide everything that we need. We thank you. I love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together? Praise God. Before you sit down, maybe turn around, find someone new, tell them welcome to church this morning. Okay, Compassion, you can be seated. It's so good to be with you all this morning. My name is Julie. I just want to take a few moments and welcome you to Compassion. Thank you for being here. If you could do something for me, um, if you can go ahead and get out this front card, this this red, white, and black card, and wave it at me. Let's see who's in, who's awake this morning. Okay, there we go. If you can go ahead, if it's your first time to Compassion, if you can go ahead and fill out the front part of that card, if it's your first time, and you can drop it in the offering buckets at the end of the service. You can also take it to the New Here Start Here tent. You can get a free gift, which is super awesome. Maybe you have something going on in your life. If you'll turn the card on the back, we would love to pray with you. Whether you are a teenager in the room, maybe you're dealing with anxiety or depression or Maybe you're a, an adult, maybe dealing with some healing needs that you want us to pray over. We would love to be able to join you in prayer. And so you can put that on the back, the prayer request, and we would love to join you. We pray over these every Monday as a team. Many of you came this morning and, you know, we love to worship God when we sing. But another way that we can worship God is when we give. And here are three ways that you can partner with us in giving. And we, only re we not only reach people here in our community, but when you give, you're able to reach people all over the world. And so we would love to partner with you to help more people find and follow Jesus. We have something for the ladies and the guys this morning. Ladies, where are you at this morning? Okay, there you are. Ladies, we have a new Bible study starting this Tuesday. It's called Untangle Your Emotions by Jenny Allen. We meet right back here. We would encourage you to come. And it will last five weeks. I told uh, the ladies at the nine, I said, you know what? Maybe you work on Tuesday mornings. Maybe ask your boss off for an hour or two. Maybe he won't mind. We would love to invite you. We have uh, child care as well available. And then guys, where are you at this morning? Any guys in the house? Okay. Guys, we know that we got to give you some food. So we have men's breakfast coming up. It was awesome last month, and we plan on doing this monthly. And so if you didn't get to make last month, we'd encourage you to come. Not only do you get good food, but Pastor Myron also gives a devotion, and so we'd encourage you to come. We have a new ministry starting up here at Compassion. How many of you have heard of Celebrate Recovery? 
Okay. Celebrate Recovery is an awesome ministry, whether you have hurts, hangups, addictions, struggles. Um, if, you were, if you struggle with anything, I think that's most of us. We're all broken, right? We're all broken people. We'd encourage you to come to Celebrate Recovery. It's not just a new ministry. It really is a family. And not only will you get a meal, you'll be able to have small group. You'll be able to have teaching, and it will be a great time for you. So you can sign up right here on the QR code for the launching date, May 3rd. It's every Friday night. And if you would also like to serve in this, we would encourage you to sign up there as well. There's nothing more exciting going on at Compassion than baptism. How many of you are excited for Baptism Sunday? Oh, we love Baptism Sunday. Maybe you haven't been baptized yet. We would encourage you to take this next step, and you can hit the QR code, or Pastor Myron will actually be um, on the patio with the blue balloons, and you can see him there. You know, we love to give back monthly here at Compassion. We do a, a project that you all can get involved in. And this month, we actually, this Friday night, we're joining with Guthrie. We're having a prom here on campus. And Guthrie, you may not know, they lease our facility and we partner with them during the week. It's a facility for young adults with special needs. And so there's going to be a young adults prom here on Friday night. They're wanting all the teenagers to come too. And so if you don't have to sign up, you can just show up anytime from 5 to 7.30 and come dance with some young adults. So it's super awesome. And it's a great way for you to give back with your time and with your family. Today is Little World Changers Day. You're going to hear a little bit more about that. And at the end of the service, we have our Little World Changers um, Commitment Day. We're really excited about that. But I asked someone super special to come up here and help me end out this, ser- uh, this part of the service in prayer. I'm going to ask my son, Cohen, to come to the stage. Can you welcome Cohen to the stage this morning? <laughs> Cohen. When we moved here um, to Arizona, Cohen was just a little baby. And now how old are you, Cohen? Eleven. Cohen's 11 years old. I can't believe that. Cohen, tell everyone, I know your parents don't make you come, but tell them why you love to come to Compassion um, every Sunday. You're in preteens now in the youth group. You're starting the youth group. So tell them why you love Compassion Kids, Compassion Preteens. Because it's a fun way to learn about God with your friends. Okay, that's a good answer. I think so. What Does that have anything to do with like free coffee, free donuts, um, going to the church kitchen and getting whatever you want in there? Does that have anything to do with it? Kind of. Okay, kind of. Cohen, we are so grateful that you um, have, you also, did you get baptized here at Compassion? Yes. Yes, he got baptized here at Compassion. This has been a special place for Cohen to grow up. As he's, when we got here, he was just a little, little kid. But Cohen, would you mind praying over World Changers Day? Also, Dad, as he um, preaches, and then I'll pray right after you. Dear God, um, I thank you that we get to worship you in this church. Um, I thank you that um, my dad gets to preach, and I thank you that you died on the cross and rose from the grave for each and every one of us. Um, Please help these little world changers to grow up and have a strong faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And dear Jesus, we just love you so much. Thank you so much that um, our boys have got to grow up here and that they love you. And thank you for all the families here, God, that we are able to um, grow together as a family, as a community. And that it's a safe place for our kids to learn about you. There's really nothing better that we could ask for. And God, as we are thinking about um, Compassion Prep Academy and the renovations going on in Compassion Kids, God, we just can't uh, wait to be able to be a part of something so awesome that has an eternal impact that young families in our community are going to get to know all about you. God, we love you. Thank you for our church. We love you so much. You're so, so good to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, welcome to our final installment of Love and Marriage. If you're glad to be here today, put your hands together and praise God with me. We are looking into God's Word to learn how we can improve our relationships, improve our marriages, and uh, level up in our love life. So whether you're single and ready to mingle or married or somewhere in between, We are really glad that you're here today to concentrate on God's Word, to learn how we can have better relationships in our marriage, our friendships, and at work, in our neighborhood, and our families. 
It's going to be a great day. How many of you have ever been in an argument with your spouse, your significant other, or whoever? You've been in an argument. Just raise your hand so I'll feel better before I tell this story. And now how many of you did something dumb to cause that argument to happen, raise your hand, right? Okay, I'm, I'm so glad. You know, there was one time Julie and I were just getting started. We, we had just been married a, just a short time, and we decided to have a bunch of people over to our house. And we couldn't get together on who was going to be there and who wasn't. And I, uh, I, I was a proponent for this one couple coming. She said, ah, you know, I, I love them, but it's not the right time with the other people that were there. She had a reason. And I thought I had a reason, right? And I'm, I said to self, uh, I don't care what she says. I want to do it this way. How many of you have ever had that feeling and you regret it? All right? I just, uh, I mean, I, I thought this is the time to take a stand and show her that I am going to make a decision. Even though she doesn't like it, it's what's best for our family. And that went over like a lead balloon. I mean, I... I thought she's going to kill me because I got the phone and right in front of her. I was stupid, all right? Don't ever do this. I, I said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to hide it from you. I'm going to call him right now. And I dialed the number, and I said, and I said hey, uh, we're having a party at our house. And it was the, these were the people kind of on the bubble. I said, do you think you'd like to? Oh, that's great. Come on. I told him the time and everything. And when I got off the phone, she threw a shoe at me, right? She was like, whoa. And it was, it was a nice throw. It wasn't being mean. She wasn't trying to kill me or anything. But we had uh, um, to learn to navigate through some relationship struggles and still learning. How many of you are still learning out there and you're ready to learn some more about love and marriage today, the principles that we look at? from God's Word, from Jesus today, are going to be helpful in your marriage and any relationship that you have. So they're transferable. I just want to speak a word over the singles. If you're single here today, I want this to be helpful for you. And when I was uh, pursuing a relationship with Julie, Julie and I both devoted daily times of prayer in whether or not God wanted us to be together. And I'm going to tell you, that's the greatest thing. If you are single and you are ready to mingle, you are ready for God to give you that special someone, I can't overemphasize the need for you to be praying daily about who God would have for you to have. And, um, you know, I was... I was praying for a super uh, beautiful and spiritual person. And then, you know what? It dawned on me, not only do I need to be praying about it, but I need to be that person. I mean, I I need to be all that God has me to be so I'll attract the right person. And so if I had any advice for singles today, it would be pray every day about who God would have for you. And not only pray, but be the right person that God would have for you to be. And then you'll attract the right person. And then, here's the great thing, you can pursue, with God's help, relationships with confidence. And man, there is nothing in this world like knowing that, like when I stood at the altar with Julie committing our relationship to God, to be husband and wife forever, I said to Julie that day in confidence, I know this is God's will for my life. And I want you to have that as well. So as we look into Matthew chapter number 5, we're going to begin reading in just a few moments in verse 31 and 32. But here's the bottom line today. And God reminded me, he spoke to me through his spirit and my soul loud and clear this week. He said, Myron, I want you to know what you're doing today is super important. It really makes a difference in marriages and in relationships. And so what we're talking about today, I want us to enter into it with the realization that God could make your home happy again. He could change the trajectory of your children Because mom and dad could get on the same page and get closer to Jesus and have a stronger relationship than ever. And this could change your family forever. This could be a miracle moment for your marriage. And as we enter into this, God was just wanting me to share with you that, hey, this can make a huge impact, a huge difference going forward. And this could be the turning point. As we look into Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus is not going to dodge a difficult Subject. He's going to deal with the subject of divorce. And we're going to see what he says about divorce, a real problem in our day, as it was in his. But we're not only going to look at the problem today in Matthew 5, we're going to look at the Bible, and we're going to find the solutions that God gives in order for us to have healthy relationships 
and it's the solution that we're going to spend a lot of time on today. Divorce, it says, verse 31, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. Now, just give me some, let me give you some context here of what's going on. In Jesus' day, much like our day, divorce was rampant. In fact, uh, historians tell us contextually that Pharisees would walk around with divorce papers in their pocket. And they would pull out these divorce certificates, as it mentions in verse 31. They would pull out these certificates of divorce, and they would use them as a weapon to threaten. They would say, if you don't do right, I'm going to divorce you. And I want to encourage you, if you're married right now, right, uh, I want you to think about it this way. Uh, Just rip out the D word from your dictionary, all right? If you're married, throw away the matrimonial parachute. When you climb aboard the marriage airplane and you set off, you take off into the sky forever, you, you don't bring a parachute on with you anymore, okay? What's in the past is the past, and you can get, behind, get beyond that, and now that you're moving forward, let's go ahead and commit together. We're going to work through this thing, okay? And, and Jesus, on a broader scale throughout the Scripture, uh, we learned some stuff about divorce. Divorce was never the original intent. It was always meant for Adam and Eve to be together. And and I know, man, I want to be really uh, considerate of the hurt that people have been through. Let me just address that in the room right now. I know many of you awesome, wonderful people have been through divorce. And I want you to know that is not some type of a stigma that you have to bring into this room. We We don't put that upon you. We don't want you to feel that. We don't want you to place that on yourself. We love you, and God loves you, and he is for you. We are for you. And the past is the past let's just make the best of the future together can we all agree to that right there God's got a big plan for your life no matter what uh, or how divorce has affected you no matter how whether you have been divorced whether you are uh, grew up in a divorced family divorce is so prevalent and rampant in our day uh, we're talking to people that have all been affected so I want you to know that God doesn't hate people that have been divorced they're, you're not like second-level Christians or anything like that. Uh, but scripturally, God never intended for divorce to be uh, the go-to. That was always originally intended for husband and wife, Adam and Eve, to be together for life. In fact, uh, the people of God, the people of Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, went to Moses and started asking him. You can write it down read it later. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. They said, hey, can you give us... Uh, certificates of divorce so that we, divorce papers so that if we want to get divorced we can and they they went to him so much that he said okay we'll we'll work this out and have divorce now in Malachi chapter 2 we find out that God doesn't like divorce it says he hates divorce here's why he hates divorce it causes hurt it causes sadness it causes a lot of pain and so um, thankfully, God can bring restoration and healing and, and bring people closer to him through all that. He can take what was meant for evil and turn it for good. And that's what we're believing about your past, no matter what it is. And so today, we're going to not only notice this, the problem of divorce in Matthew chapter 5, that it was, a, it was a rampant problem in that day like it is this, in this day and age, that we're going to look and see uh, some solutions. It goes on to say, but I say to you that everyone, verse 32, who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality. Okay, so you want to know what Jesus said about grounds for divorce Sexual immorality, it's a broad term. By the way, it's the Greek word pornea, which we get our word pornography from. And so the grounds for divorce, according to Jesus, is sexual immorality, a very broad term. Now, uh, Paul goes on to say later, he speaks of abandonment as uh, a, a, a grounds for divorce. So scripturally, you're looking at adultery. Uh, fornication, some type of sexual sin, abandonment, and God doesn't expect you to stay in a punching bag situation and be abused in any way in your relationship. That's just the bottom line. Uh, We would never tell a person who is in an abusive relationship to stay there and be abused. That's not what we're talking about. So um, as we talk about divorce, it uh, opens up a lot. And my goal in this 
message today is to give you solutions for divorce and to help us to be able to have right relationships together. And again, these principles that we're going to look at today in God's Word are designed to help us in any relationship. They're transferable to friendships, to working relationships, and to family relationships, whatever types of relationships that we're in. And so, um, by the way, marriage was never meant to be a contract relationship. It, It was never meant for what the Pharisees had brought it to, where they pull out their divorce papers and say, hey, here's the paperwork. I can, I can cancel this divorce any time and threaten with this weapon of divorce. That's not what God intended. He didn't intend for there to be a contract-type relationship. God is a, a God of covenant relationships, and that's what marriage is. It's a covenant relationship between two people and God. And God always is a covenant-making God who seeks to make a covenant relationship. It's not just a legal uh, act that's done uh, in paper with a contract. It's not legal. It's love. God actually wants you to have a love life where you're in love with your spouse, in love with God. And we see this in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6, God superintends and God is the one who has started the marriage relationship. It says, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, don't let man separate. Okay, so uh, God says this covenant relationship between husband and a wife and God is is a relationship of love that he has put together and he doesn't want it to be separated from this point on. Um, So it's not a... It's not a contractual relationship, it's a covenant relationship. And uh, there's an illustration that I want to share with you. It's called the marriage mountain. And in this picture, it pictures a husband and a wife, and then Jesus at the top of the mountain. And if you'll notice in the picture, it's a picture of a husband and wife at the bottom. And you notice there's a distance there. It's the farthest they are apart from each other because they're far from Jesus. If you look at the next slide, look what happens. As they go up the marriage mountain, now what has happened, the husband and wife are closer to each other because they are closer to Jesus. God wants you to level up in your love life and climb the marriage mountain. And today I'm going to give you six principles that are going to help you to level up in your love life. How to level up in your love life. Number one, love sacrificially. Again, we're going to look at the broader context of the Bible, how we can level up in our love life so we can overcome separation and divorce and all the hurt. Love love sacrificially. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, we get a commandment. And it's within the marriage. It's uh, for a husband to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Looks like Ephesians chapter five in Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-five. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That is sacrificial love. Now I know it's talking to husbands, obviously. But did you know that in general we are to love one another? God gives a command, and it's the same Greek word, agape. We are to agape, love one another. And that word agape means to love with the type of love that God loved us on the cross. That same type of love. It's uh, not a love that seeks to get. It's a love that seeks to give. This is the special type of love that everyone wants to receive, but hardly anybody always wants to give. It's a special love of God that is sacrificial. It's not selfish, it's selfless. It's a love that seeks to give, not get. It's the love of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's sacrificial love that will help you climb the marriage mountain. Sacrificial love, if it won't work, nothing will. If sacrificial love won't work in your relationship... Nothing else will. This is at the foundation of your ascent up to Jesus. Here's why. The approach that Jesus took, the the approach of God, God's approach to attract right relationships is based on the reciprocal principle. This is the love of God. This is how he chose 
to pursue right relationships. Jesus said, I will give sacrificial love for the world, for God so loved the world that he gave. This is his approach to right relationships. I want to encourage you to copy his approach. If you want right relationships, don't seek to get, seek to give into that relationship. The reciprocal principle is really simple, but it's hard to do, right? The reciprocal principle says, if I know the person's need, I'm going to try to meet it over my own needs. And if I do, it'll start a wonderful cycle. It'll be reciprocated. And you say, man, I've tried that before, and it just won't work. And you tried it all for 30 seconds, and you gave up, right? You say, I'm going to try to meet their needs, and, and, and I know that they're going to they're gonna in turn all of a sudden be the, the, the most wonderful spouse in the world. And it may not be so fast, but if you over time will live... And here's the, here's the thing. Your motive can't be just so they'll give it back to you. The motive must be I will love them unconditionally and meet their needs sacrificially. And one day, if it pays off or not, I'll know that I've done the right thing and loved them like God loved me, like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, this is not just for men. It's for the spouse too, the, the, the wife. I know it says husbands love your wives. But again, God has commanded us to love one another. We are all to love each other with sacrificial love. Husband, wife, friend, neighbor, co-worker. In every relationship, this type of love works. God's approach to attract right relationships is based on this. Let's copy God's example. And uh, do you know why uh, this hasn't worked for you? Probably because you really haven't given it enough effort. You haven't tried enough. It's not human. It's not natural. This is divine agape love. It's the highest form of love. It doesn't come naturally. But I want to encourage you to sacrifice for your spouse. Sacrifice for your friend. Put their needs above your needs. Sacrifice. Try to meet their needs. Um, Sacrifice your time. Do you know why marriages are crumbling? Because husbands and wives are not spending the time that they need to with each other. Sacrifice your time to spend with your spouse. Marriages are in ruin today because you're not spending time like you did when you were first dating, when you were first together in infatuation and puppy love. You spent all the time you could with them, but now uh, you don't have that time. Sacrifice your time so that you can spend time with each other. I want to give you a tool. It's called the even though principle, and it goes right along with sacrificial love, the even though principle. And it's a tool that will help you, and it, it goes like this. Even though... I don't feel like doing the dishes and the laundry again. I'm going to do it because my spouse needs help. And I'm going to give of myself and sacrifice, even though I don't feel like it. It could be like, even though I don't feel like connecting emotionally with my spouse because I'm mad or because I'm just tired, I'm going to... Do it because their need is important, and they need me to connect emotionally. It could be like, even though I don't feel like having a physical, romantic relationship with my spouse, I'm going to because even though I don't feel like it, I know that's their need. This is the type of love that is so hard to find in our world, but it's the love of God, it's sacrificial love. And the even though principle says, even though I don't need it, I realize they need it, and I'm going to provide what they need because God wants me to love them sacrificially. Now, not only should we love each other sacrificially, in order to climb the marriage mountain, level up in our love life, number two, we must love smartly, smartly. And so I know it's a little different word, but it is a word. I looked up the definition of smartly, and here it is. It says smartly is in a manner using skill and intelligence. And you need to use skill and intelligence in your relationships. In fact, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, that we are to be loving our spouses smartly. 
We should live with each other according, here's the word, knowledge. Check it out. Likewise, you husbands, live with them according to knowledge. Now, this is spoken to husbands again, but it's also good for wives and for any of us that want to be in relationship. It says that we should live with each other smartly according to knowledge, using skill and intelligence. What it's teaching is that as husbands and wives, we need to get to know our spouse so that we will live with them in light of that. We don't just cohabitate within the same four walls. Marriages get to the point, sometimes it's sad, where they feel like they're living with a complete stranger because they don't even date anymore. They don't spend time together anymore. They don't listen to each other. They don't spend time together. And what God is saying is we need to love each other smartly, get to know them Get to spend time with them, be intimate together, not just cohabitating, not just living in the same four walls. And here's a way to look at this principle of loving each other smartly. Think about it. This is smart. If you know something that they like, do that thing. If you know something that they don't like, don't do that thing. It's really simple. But sometimes we push each other's buttons and we know what they don't like and we do it anyway. Like I dialed the phone. I knew she wouldn't like it, but I did it anyway. We have to get beyond that. And when we know something they like because we live with them according to knowledge, we love them smartly. Oh, they like flowers. I should give them flowers. They like it when I listen to them more and talk longer and spend time together. I'm going to do that more. If you know something they like, do it. If you know something they don't like, don't do that thing anymore. Love smart. Love sacrificially. Love smartly. Third, love specially. Love specially. This means to make them feel special. By the way, if you're single and that dude or that gal that you're dating doesn't make you feel special, run from them as fast as you can. If they don't treat you like a king or a queen while you're dating, they'll treat you like trash when they're married, right? If they're not treating you special right now, you deserve better. You are special. You're a child of God. God loves you. You're created in his image, and you should be treated with respect, dignity, and like you're a special creation son or a daughter of Jesus of God. And Jesus loves you today. You don't have to settle. All right. This is uh, brought out in 1 Peter chapter 3 as well. Check it out where it says this. Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. And this word weaker vessel doesn't mean less than or weaker in a bad way. It means special. A vessel that is like a fine piece of china. This is what it's referring to, the original wording. The word honor means to ooh and to ah over. It means to show like uh, special recognition of. And the original idea is of like a piece of china that's displayed in a china cabinet. And my grandma had this hutch with her china that she'd got when she was married. And it was special. And you could just see her looking at it, ooh and ah and over this fine china that she remembered. And she would tell her granddaughters about it. And she would say, look at that. And she would ooh and ah over this special vessel. It says the word vessel in that verse. This special piece of fine china. And what... Uh, God is telling us in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 is that we should treat each other as a special vessel of God that says, ooh and ah, you are special because you are a son and daughter of God. We should treat each other right because we are treating our husband or our wife in a way that should honor God because that's God's son or daughter, right? I'm married to God's daughter. If you're married to a man, you're married to God's son. And God wants you to treat them in a very special way. Love specially. Give honor to each other. Ooh and ah over each other. Make them feel special. Love sacrificially. Love smartly. Live with them according to knowledge. Three, love specially. Number four, love silently. Love silently. That means be a good listener. James chapter 1 says... Be slow to speak and swift to hear. Check out James chapter 1. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. God gave you two ears and one mouth so you can listen twice as much as you speak. 
God wants you to be the best listener. You want to make friends? This works in your friendships. You want to have good relationships. If, if you listen to your friend or you listen to somebody and, and really hear them out, they're going to walk away saying, that is, man, I love that person. They're so awesome. They didn't just think about what they were going to say next. They actually cared about what I was saying and validated me. Listening is a skill that is extremely important and effective in your marriage and any relationship. Love silently. Do you want to uh, make uh, great friends and fall in love? You want to have a better love life, a closer marriage? Learn to listen. There's another tool I want to give you. It's called unblended listening. And I just want to show you what unblended listening means. Since James tells us to be slow to speak and, and quick to hear and to listen, Unblended listening is built on James chapter 1, verse 19. It says this, when someone is trying to communicate with you, whether it's your husband, wife, friend, co-worker, neighbor, whoever, you listen and hear them out rather than interrupting and defending against everything they say. Now, this is hard because when they start saying, especially if it's an issue, let's say they bring an issue, hey, uh, I don't like the way you do this. Our first response normally is like, no, no, but you don't understand. This is, this, and we, we try to defend. Unblended listening says this. When they bring an issue, even a complaint against you, you say, man, I need to, I need to hear them out. James says, be slow to speak, so I'm not going to say anything other than this. Uh, uh, can you tell me more about why you feel that way? And instead of defending and thinking of what you're going to say, just say, hey, can you maybe tell me more? And what you're doing is you're exhausting all their words. Let them say it all. Because if you step in and say this, then they feel unheard and you feel offended. And it just keeps on getting blended up and it's all messed up. Let them keep on talking, unblended listening. You say this, oh, I see kind of where you're coming from. And it may, you, your toes may be digging into the carpet, and your temperature on the inside, your, your heart rate might be going up. You're ready to defend. No, you don't understand. This is, don't say it. Let them be heard. Even validate what they're saying. Say, you know what? I can see where you're coming from. I want to hear you out. Can you please tell me more about how bad I am? <laughs> you ever been there? <laughs> I know. This is like, ugh. It's not easy. But you have to let them feel like they've been heard. And then later in the day, if it's still important to you, circle back and say something like, hey, you know when you were saying that, it's important. Do you think it would it be all right sometime this evening that maybe we could circle back to that issue? Uh, there's a few things I just wanted to say. Instead of in the moment getting a back and forth, and that goes nowhere. Now, you can keep trying that, but let's see how it's been going for you so far. Probably hasn't worked, right? Why don't you try it? Unblended listening, it's a great tool that's going to help. Love silently. Be a good listener. Number five, love speedily. Love speedily. Look at 1 Peter 3, 7. At the end of the verse, it says your prayers are going to be hindered if you don't have a right relationship with, as husband and wife. And I don't know about you, but I need my prayers to be heard, so I need to be fast to forgive, and I need to run to restoration in my marriage relationship. When we have an issue, we need to get it fixed fast because I need access to God, and God gives a check and balance system right here to hold us accountable. He says, you can't just bulldoze through life apart from your husband or wife. I'm not going to answer your prayer, and that's the check and balance. And so all of us need to take note on this verse and say, okay, uh, you know what? I see that. I need to keep a short account with my spouse. And if we do get an argument, I need to fix it fast. I need to run toward restoration. That's what I mean by love speedily. Be fast to fix the problem. Number six, finally, love spiritually. Love spiritually. I got a question for you. How many of you think if you spent five to ten minutes with someone in the Word of God or praying together, that your relationship would be stronger? Just simple question. I think it's pretty obvious what the answer is. You want to climb that marriage mountain, you've got to love each other spiritually. 
Do you know down deep in your deepest need of your soul is a need to connect with other people spiritually? I love what the Bible says in Matthew, Matthew 18, 20. We quote it a lot, but it's actually uh, certainly translatable into the marriage relationship or into any relationship. This is what it says in Matthew 18. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. If you want God in the middle of your marriage, if you want to ascend the marriage mountain and level up in your love life, then you put God in your relationship. Spend time praying together. Develop a spiritual love life with the person that you're building this relationship with. Pray together. Read the Bible together. And you watch as you climb the marriage mountain together. You're closer to Jesus and you're closer to each other. We have to learn to love spiritually in order to stay strong in our relationships. Husbands, wives, maybe at the end of the day you're tired and exhausted, but right before you go to sleep, maybe you actually put the phone away. You know, unfortunately across America today and across the world, husband and wife is sitting there and not enough to sleep with a phone in your hand. And then the, the, the wife's over here on the other side of the bed and the same and what if instead of that being the case, uh, how you drift off to sleep, if you found something better to do at night and you grab each other by the hand and say, hey, let's pray just, just a quick prayer before we drift off to sleep. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for us. We got some stuff going on with our kids. I want to pray for my children this week with you. Let's pray together. That's going to bring you so close together. You're going to level up your love life by loving spiritually. That's what our souls long for, that intimacy with God and with each other. God wants to give you this, and he can as you love spiritually. You know, for years they said the research reveals, statistics have shown that 50% of all marriages end in divorce. 50%. And the crazy thing is, for years they said Christians' divorce rate is the same as everybody else's, right? Like, and that was kind of like, oh, man, we sink, right? <laughs> We're not, we, we divorce just like everybody else. But further research revealed this. And, I mean, we're talking about secular studies from the University of Harvard and other secular institutions. The research came out, and it was shocking. And it was actually encouraging. It said this, Christians who go to church regularly and are quote-unquote committed Christians are 35% less likely to end in divorce. Those that go to church faithfully, together, 35% less when they have that spiritual love with each other. And did you know on the flip side of that, Christians who would consider themselves not, com not committed, but nominal Christians. That's the term they used. Nominal Christians were 20% more likely to get divorced than even other people. Wow. So today, the spiritual element in your marriage of praying together, reading God's word, five or ten minutes a day will make all the difference in your relationships. Because we were built and designed for spiritual union and love with each other. God created a covenant relationship. And it's God and you and the other person together in right relationship. And so today I want to encourage you to level up in your love life. I want to help you climb that marriage mountain and get closer to Jesus and to the other people in your life. Love sacrificially. Even though you don't feel like it, you realize they have needs and you want to meet those needs. The even though principle of saying, even though I'm tired and that's not important to me, it's important to them. It's so important. And today I want to encourage you to make a commitment to level up in your love life in your relationships and to pray hard for the right person and to say, I'm going to be the right person until God 
sends me the right person. Then I can go forward in confidence. And right now, all across the building, if you want to pray about your relationship, maybe a a relationship that you long for, you're single and you're praying that God would send you the right person, and you're ready to level up in your love life as God sends you the right person, and maybe you're here today and you're married and you want to improve your marriage, I'm going to ask everybody, and this should be everybody, that would join together in praying for the marriages and the relationships that we long for as well, that God will make this a special time where we level up. And so right now, all across the auditorium, would everyone, let's all stand together with our hands up to God if you feel comfortable with your hands being lifted to God. And how about this? If you're married today, this is a great no-brainer time for you to grab your wife or husband by the hand, the special someone. And then uh, here's the deal. I'm so glad that God is listening today to your heart's cry for that special someone, for that special relationship. And I want you to be able to go forward in confidence knowing that you're praying, you're living, and now I know God's going to send me the right person. So together today, with our hearts lifted up to heaven, would you pray for your marriage or for that special someone that you wish God would send? This is a great spiritual moment for us to pray together. I know God wants to hear this. I've got confidence that if you do this, God's going to come through for you. You put God first, he's going to take care of you. He's going to meet your relational needs each and every time. Put God first and he'll take care of it. God, we, we appeal to you for help. And we want to copy your approach to attracting right relationships, which is reciprocal love. The reciprocal principle, help us to love others big. And we know that as we love sacrificially, that's the best way to attract the right relationships. Help us even though, even though we don't feel like it. Even though we've been hurt. Even though the past has been hard, help us to be quick to forgive. Help us to move forward in your love. God, help us to have spiritual love. Help us to love each other spiritually in prayer together so we can be strengthened and level up. Help us to level up today in our love life. In Jesus' name, strengthen our marriages. Strengthen our relationships. Send the right people, God, to the people that long for a loving relationship. Would you grant it? In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. Man, it's been an awesome series, Love and Marriage. And I hope that if uh, you've missed a week or two, you can go back and listen to the other messages. Today is uh, Little World Changers Sunday. And today we're really glad about that because we have some Little World Changers. They're marching in the kids today. They've brought them over to be a part of the service. And I see kids here already. That's awesome. And we're going to just let the kids sing along with us as we worship together. You know, kids love to worship. And little world changers like we have here today are going to come in as part of our little world changer Sunday, helping the next generation win. They're going to sing with us as we worship together. Your name is healing, your name
being with us today, and uh, what I want to encourage us to do right now is just take a moment and pray over our kids, and uh, if you will, if you feel like uh, free to do this, I hope you will, just will you extend a hand over our children as we pray a blessing over them, as we speak Jesus over the next generation. Father in heaven, we thank you for our kids, my kids, their kids. God, we want to raise up little world changers who will be strong in their faith, who will have a foundation to face a crazy world. God, we live in a, frankly, a a violent society. We live in a depraved culture. And so we want to provide every possible opportunity for our children to be strengthened in their faith so they can make an impact as we launch them out into this world for Jesus Christ, that they could stand strong in their relationship with him. We pray for protection for each and every boy and girl in here. 
We pray that you would guard them from evil, that you would lead them not into temptation, but deliver them from the evil of this world. And we thank you that you care for them and that you will. And we pray as we speak this, we speak the name of Jesus over each and every one of their lives, that you would use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can you give them a round of applause? Awesome. Our little world changers are going to head back. If y'all can be seated just for a few moments, we have something special uh, right now where our kids get checked back in safely. Y'all did so awesome up here. Um, But today is Little World Changers Day. And I can't think of anything better to invest in in, than these kids. And not only when we give is it special because it's for our kids, but it's eternal impact. And I have two um, awesome families up here with us, the Boucher family and McAvoy family. And I thought it would be cool just to hear from families in our church um, so you can hear, like, why do you come to Compassion? Why do, what do you value about Compassion Kids? And why do you think it's important to invest in Little World Changers Day? Well, since the first day we came, we felt welcomed, like it was our family, and that's exactly what we wanted. Since we don't have family here in Arizona, Compassion has become our family, and that's been huge to us. And both of us grew up in the church, and we just want to extend that over our kids. And being on the Compassion Kids team, we get to plan and have amazing lessons and watch these teachers love on these kids every single Sunday. And that means the world to us as parents, and it's my passion of teaching and being able to use my gift here at church as well. It's an amazing thing. And then Josh and Addie and little Finley. Hey, Finley. (laughs) Yeah, you know, there's nothing more important to me than having a place that is safe, engaging, and teaching the Bible to my daughter, (laughs) who really wants to talk. (laughs) But I know, uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> she, she didn't do that the first service. No, she did. She's more comfortable. But she loves it here. And we love that she has a safe place where so many people love her and value her. her. And no one ever told me that, like how much your heart just grows when you see other people love on your kids. Yeah. And seeing other people support us as parents and, and make that such a priority, that's just been the most important thing to us. That's so valuable. So we are so grateful for these families. Like they said, um, these families, um, I know Josh and Addie serve. Addie is our kids director. Josh is our youth. And then Becca serves in the kids, kids coordinator, as well as Adam. Um, He helps in youth. They really are um, families that love and support our kids. So I think we should thank them as well as y'all walk off. So thank you so much for just your love and support. Well, I know that you feel the same. I believe that anyway. Um, I know uh, the words they spoke about the value of Compassion Kids and what we provide each and every week is important to our home and their development as your children as well. And what we've set out to do in Little World Changers uh, in this opportunity that you have to give, we want to improve the environments over there. We want to provide a playground for them to be able to enjoy and just to elevate the experience they have to help them find and follow Jesus. And so our Compassion Kids program is growing by leaps and bounds. We're so thankful for all the new kids and your family. And uh, right now, it's an opportunity for you to take out the Little World Changer card right here. Julie and I have been praying as a couple, as a family. We prayed last night and asking God to show us what he would have for us to give. And we've been talking about this for several weeks. If you open it up, you can see that if you give over the next six months, what it could possibly become. And so we want to encourage you to write something in there. And maybe $100 a month, it will equal 600 over the six-month commitment that we're now taking. You can start your gift now. You can give it all in one lump sum or over the six-month period. And what's awesome is not only are we able to um, give for our kids, but we're able to start a preschool Compassion Prep Academy. We already have kids enrolling. And, you know, it's very exciting to know that we can be a part of these families finding Jesus for the first time. And so I think it's pretty awesome that when we give, it does affect our children because they're going to have awesome facility and playground and learn about Jesus. But during the week, those same facilities are going to be used for little boys and little girls who don't know Jesus. 
And so I, we hope that you will join in. You know, everybody can do something. If, it's, if this is not your church home and you're just here for the first time, please don't get involved in this unless you feel led. We, hey, we'll take it. But um, we would ask that every family would think about what can we do? You know, what can we do to impact? We have little world changers in the back. They're holding little buckets. You can fill it out now. Take a few moments if you want, if you have it already, and you can put it um, in the in the buckets. Um, but right now, if you will, just kind of hold these cards, and we're going to pray over it before we're dismissed. Well, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to take these cards to drop them in the buckets on the way out. Thank you that we can have a part together in reaching little world changers for Jesus Christ and we can help point them in the right direction. In this crazy world, we can make an impact in their lives. It's so important. Help us all to do our part. Whatever you lay on our hearts, God, we know you'll bless. Thank you for what you're gonna do through this awesome renovation of the space to provide an even better experience for our compassion kids. We love you and thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for every gift in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week and we'll see you right back here next week.